the queen bee is elected for a life of torture by her own family. There are only a few ways that a queen bee is introduced to a hive and none of them are via election. In some instances, an aging queen will leave the hive and several of her daughters will be selected pre-birth as potential candidates for the next generation's royal insect. In other cases, possible potential queens are chosen by a human beekeeper or worse, the workers themselves, who are often cousins or even sisters of the forming larvae. This is in no way, shape, or form a compliment. The chosen candidate will most likely die prior to reigning over the colony. In the event that she lives, she will be exposed to cruelty within the first couple of days of being born and the cycle won't end until she dies. She's force-fed into obesity. Have you ever wondered why a queen bee is so much larger than the workers and drones? Well, as it turns out, she isn't just greedily devouring more than her share of the food. Nor is she born genetically different than her peers. The horrifying truth is that she's being force-fed a concoction known as royal jelly and she's being given way more than her share against her will. This causes her to become large and sluggish when compared to the bees around her and also gives her that recognizable queen bee look. She's prematurely ripped from her womb cell. Since several virgin candidates are pre-selected for this life of hellish grandeur, the competition for survival starts pretty young. And by young, we mean, pre-birth. The old queen lays eggs for potential queen bees, called virgin queens, in special called queen cups, larger versions of the cells in which regular eggs are deposited. If a cell has been entered through the side, it's pretty safe to assume that one of the infant queen bee elects slaughtered a rival candidate right as it was being born. Even insects are in a race for the throne. Virgin queen bees are forced to fight each other to the death. Once you've been picked for the life of queenhood, there's pretty much no turning back. Virgin queens are equipped with unstoppable stingers that are not barbed like the ones on the worker bees. This means they can sting one another repeatedly until somebody dies. In order to live, virgin bees must travel around a hive, calling each other out and fighting to the death until only one virgin queen remains. Talk about a heavy price for a crown. The queen mates only once in her life by ripping off her partner's abdomens. The mating ritual happens suddenly, right after the fights to the death have ceased. In a practice referred to as swarming, several male bees mate with the queen while she's flying through the air. After the two finish their close encounter, the male bee must depart and leave his abdomen behind, and worse, said abdomen remains connected to the queen. By the time her one mating flight is complete, she will have up to 100 million sperm cells stored within her body for use throughout the rest of her life. After one male companion has sown his seed and severed his abdomen, another comes up behind him, ripping the abdomen of her now deceased former partner out of her reproductive organs, inserting his own abdomen and killing himself in the process. The queen spends her life giving birth to 1,500 babies every day. As you might imagine, 100 million sperm cells aren't just going to lay themselves. If things go according to plan, the reigning queen bee will spend the vast majority of her life laying eggs. How many eggs? Well, approximately 1,500 a day is the going rate in a thriving community. However, the operative phrase here is if things go according to plan. If they don't, the situation can get even worse for the queen and the entire colony. Queens can't mate in rainy weather, potentially destroying the hive. Since the mating traditionally takes place mid-flight and since bees can't fly in rain, a queen bee who reaches mating maturity, a couple days after birth, during rainy weather must resort to laying unfertilized eggs instead. These eggs will hatch into drones but cannot create the worker bees a hive needs. This practice, scientifically known as drone laying, can cripple or even destroy a hive. When a queen isn't welcome, her hive will sentence her to death by bawling. If a beekeeper relocates his queen and the workers view her as a threat rather than an asset, she'll be subject to death by bawling. We all know how scary it is when a swarm of bees relentlessly targets us in lieu of roses, and we've even seen instances where thousands of bees go after a person they felt was a threat to the hive. 
Now imagine this scenario happening to you if you were a bee. Imagine looking up at not hundreds, but tens of thousands of angry bees, swarming around you all at once, all of them set on killing you. In death by bawling, all the bees in the hive gang up on one queen. The close-knit cluster they form around her raises her body temperature to the point where she overheats and dies. This is described as a real hassle for beekeepers. It's also another horrifying aspect of a queen bee's life. When a beekeeper wants to force out a queen, he hacks off her legs. In the fleeting instances where the queen bee beats all the odds thrown at her, meaning she kills all of the rival virgin queens, makes it out of the hive on a sunny day, gives birth to 80,000 babies that she's forced to leave behind when she gets relocated by the beekeeper, and finally, escapes death by falling and becomes one with the new hive, she's rewarded in the strangest of ways. She gets her legs amputated by the beekeeper. When queen bees become too old or frail to continue in their role, their hives will begin the process for instating a new queen in a procedure known as supercedure. However, beekeepers will sometimes hasten the process by clipping off a queen bee's legs. Beekeepers sometimes keep the queen crippled and immobile. Humans have certainly gone to a great deal of lengths to make honey. In one incredibly cruel procedure, the queen has her wings clipped so she becomes hive-bound and the beekeeper won't have to fret about the bees leaving the hive. The best case scenario for the queen is that she becomes immobilized, an egg-laying baby machine forever bound to her hive. Worst case scenario? A major vein is accidentally clipped during the process and she falls ill and is subsequently murdered by her fellow bees for not being strong enough to maintain the hive. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this video press the like button, leave a comment letting us know what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already.